a uh, very good evening to one and all and on behalf of the organizing committee of the sixth lecture workshop on transdisciplinary areas of research and teaching by shanti swarup bhatnagar awardees i would like to welcome dr subhadeep chatterji from the laboratory of plant microbe interactions center for dna fingerprinting and diagnostic hyderabad and he'll be talking to us on a topic understanding the social language of bacteria speak or not to speak before inviting dr chatterjee let me briefly introduce him to all the august audience he received his bs msc and phd in 1996 98 and 2004 respectively and was a post doctoral research associate at department of plant and microbial biology university of california during 2005 to 2008 currently is a staff scientist 6 group leader at center for dna fingerprinting and diagnostic cdfd hyderabad he received innovative young biotechnologist award in 2009 from dbt that is department of biotechnology government of india and he received the national bioscience award for career development from dbt again during the year 2017-18 he received a shanti swarup bhatnagar prize in the year 2020 for science and technology in biological sciences and was also elected a fellow of the indian national science academy in the year 2020 and he was also elected as a fellow of the national academy of sciences india in 2019 his current research interests are quorum sensing molecular microbiology molecular host microbe interactions plant pathogenic bacteria and molecular genetics of bacteria with these words I now invite Dr. Chatterjee to kindly share his screen to deliver his talk. Thank you, Dr. Manoj, for giving kind intro introduction. So I will uh, load my slide and then we'll we'll start. So approximately twenty-five minutes, twenty-five to thirty. Yeah, twenty-five to thirty minutes, yeah. and then we'll be having five to ten. Sure, minutes. sure, sure. 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 Is it visible? So, yeah, it's it's absolutely visible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So as I told that, uh, by uh, our topic is uh, understanding the social language of bacteria. So this talk I will I have divided into three parts. In the first part, I will talk about uh, what is how, what is the social language of very tiny living organisms such as microbes. and how they talk with each other and the second part uh, i will talk so uh, about how they talk with each other and why they talk what is the benefit for talking uh, this micro in the third part i will talk about why this uh, talking is very important for very important microbes which causes uh, infections and also in many other beneficial uh, uh, microbial species so let us uh, start so if you see uh, response by communication is one of the very key feature of uh, of a living organism characteristic of a living organism like we say we are alive because we show many characters such as growth reproduction heredity homeostasis metabolism many cellular function along with those the response to the environment is very important for the survival of the organism and why it is very important because it helps the organism to adapt to changing environmental condition that means the communication either by sensing or by uh, communication by language is very important to alert the fellow mates that what is going to come uh, to better prepare for the adverse condition so if you see the evolution of communication so now language is one of the most uh, considered as one of the most evolved form of uh, communication that survival 
and it is important for survival of all living organism as i told you very similar to language people think that it is very similar to human or the biological evolution like as biological evolution has diversity and it is always evolving from both in the spatial and temporal fashion similarly you see the language varies and develops more and you get more very highly sophisticated form of language comes in the form of grammar and a lot of other components which uh, which are constantly evolving so there are different mode of different mode of communication many living organism communicate with very different uh, forms for example you might have seen that firefly blinks so it blinks in a particular pattern to actually send a message uh, for mating and like peacock dance elephant uh, make a particular sound which gives them a language and the best example one of the in the nature is the dancing uh, language of the honey bees so you might have heard like honey bees uh, do a typical dance ritual uh, actually that is nothing but but uh, the fellow mates communicate with each other suppose a honey bee has found a very uh, flowers with a very good quality nectar it communicates to its fellow mate that nectar is there in that location so the whole earth all, uh, all benefits so there are different forms of communication so the question arises do very very minute microbes such as bacteria which is hardly around 1 to 4 micrometer in length and you can hardly see with your naked eye you have to require a very high magnification uh, like uh, around 10000 times to see it uh, to see it so if you see the life of bacteria which has been thought earlier as a very solitary lifestyle lonely lifestyle so the obviously the question arises was that do bacteria have social structure like other animals and humans and whether they have different communication methods so the idea came very very uh, Uh, surprisingly from a uh, serendipitous fashion so there is a squid which is called a hawaiian squid which is, it is found in the pacific ocean so marine biologists found that this squid emits a blue kind of luminescence the blue light kind of luminescence and this light helps the squid to find its food which is shrimps and other small crustacean during the night and they were they produce uh, they got more surprised when they studied this uh, squid they found that the light which is produced by the squid is it's not its own light it is the light which is produced by millions of bacteria which are sitting in their light organs so these are the light organs so and the observation which came is that this bacteria colonizes in the light organs of the squid and produces light and they produce light only when they are in large in numbers so they did a very clever experiment so they took the bacteria and grow it this is low me indicates at low cell density less number of cells there is no production of light and there is a production of light when they are very high in numbers they did a very clever experiment they thought that the light producing substance or the message only comes at a high cell density so they took the medium the spent medium which is the culture medium of the bacteria and put it in the non communicating bacteria and again it started to communicate so that indicate there is they indicated to them that there is a chemical or a chemical substance which is produced at a high cell density only and that helps to synchronize the light production and then as i told you then they added 
the supernatant in the non-light producing bacteria that is at low cell density and they started producing the light. So they indicated that chemical communication, there is a substance or message which is secreted by the bacteria. As the field started more growing, the field of socio-microbiology started, which is a study of the bacteria in a community. So bacteria were no longer considered as a solitary organism. So there is transitions which happens from a solitary to a community life form and the vice versa. There is a reversible process. And this is an example in our lab. We have taken this is a picture of a, a very powerful microscope in which you can see mountain-like structure. These are nothing but houses which are made up by millions of bacteria. So then how they communicate with each other? As I told, they communicate by a process which is called as quorum sensing. So it is a density dependent cell cell signaling. This is very important. So it's a density dependent. As you see, when the bacteria is low in number, in low cell density, they keep producing these chemical molecules which are indicated in red. The bacteria is indicated in green. As the density increases, the amount of the signaling molecule or the red balls also increases and when it reaches a particular threshold it it gives a message back to the bacteria and tells them how many you are and what function you should do so there is a communication at low cell density which tells the bacteria you are low in number and there is a communication which goes and tells the bacteria that you are in high in number so basically, bacteria can count and recognize each other by their language. And they love to talk. So this is uh, the bacterial language seen in action in, uh, in the lab. So you can't listen to their action, but you can see their action by using different biosensors. So this is a plate of bacteria, which is on the left-hand side, which is glowing green by a green fluorescent protein which is hooked to a quorum sensing circuit. You can see a lot of bacteria is there. They are talking and on the right side, there are still a lot of bacteria, but they are not talking. And what are these chemical molecules? So you don't have to go into details, but there are very diverse family of quorum sensing signaling molecule. And one of the most common form is by the acyl homocerin lactone. So it has a lactone ring and a different methyl R groups which are added. So it is very similar to our, our own language in the Indian language such as Sanskrit in which Sanskrit is the core and different dialects are added like Bengali or Devanagari. So just like a mother language and different uh, regional languages are added. In that way, bacteria varies their language. And in our lab, we work on a family of molecules, which is called a diffusible signal factor, DSF, which is a fatty acid-like signaling molecule. And very similar to homocerin lactone, it also adds different acyl chain to vary the language. And these bacteria are very clever as like human, like many humans, which are like multilingual, some bacteria are multilingual, they can speak in more two or more different languages. This is an example of Vibrio cholera, which causes cholera in humans. It's a very bad, deadly disease. So it communicates with two different signaling molecules. One is acyl homocerin lactone, one is borofuranol. So this is acting as a uh, signaling molecule. Uh, for communicating among themselves, the acyl homocerin lactone used to communicate among themselves and borofuranol to with the other bacteria which are there in the gut. So it actually gives a uh, it gives actually a idea to the bacteria that you, they can communicate with each other with the acyl homocerin lactone and they can also communicate with a more common language to the other bacteria. 
so they take do private talking and they also do public talking to modulate their behavior and bacteria is not only clever in speaking different languages and also multi languages they are also very clever in hiding their language for example there are certain bacteria which don't speak any language that means they don't make any language molecule but they have ear like receptors which are there on the surface and these ear like receptors help them to listen to what other bacteria is talking very similar to the noisy neighborhood cartoon which is depicted in the down where a new neighbors move in in your community actually the already existing neighbors are more curious to know who they are just to make them prepare that whom they are going to face or what is their neighborhood very similar to and this is a very simplistic cartoon to show you the gene regulatory circuit of a quorum sensing signaling system in which basically bacteria makes a synthase protein which makes the enzyme and this enzyme catalyzes the formation of the signaling molecule which is homocysteine lactone for example as the density increases the concentration of the homocysteine lactone also increases and it gives a feedback signal to a regulator which is a dna binding regulator and it binds to the different parts of the dna in the uh, chromosome and then it regulates expression of genes in a very concert in a orchestral fashion to modulate the behavior of the organism then in the second part of my talk as i told i first part i introduced you to the quorum sensing the secret language of the bacteria and what is the social structure now we will come to why they talk and what is the what is the necessary to talk because if you see energy wise production of signaling molecule is very expensive but then why they talk this is depicted in a very simplified cartoon imagine a person who is firing a bullet to break a wall the firing power of the bullet is not enough to break the wall but if many people are firing together then there is a great chance that the wall may break so there that means there is there are certain task which when in done in unison gives more rewards that means the benefits will be more just like breaking the wall imagine this is a host cell suppose there is a pathogen which is infecting when it fires the virulence factor alone it will be less effective and waste uh, waste of energy but when they will uh, attack together in a very synchronized fashion then the host cell may break the wall may break and they will get more nutrients so alone uh, Uh, when you are alone you can do the job but the benefits will be less so therefore it is a group benefit and a, it is a synchronized uh, action regulation to control gene expression to perform social task in which which are benefit for the society so in our lab we work on xanthomonas group of plant pathogens so xanthomonas uh, because it makes xanthan gum and it's yellow in color uh, bacteria it's a very deadly bacteria which causes large number of uh, infection in many economically important crops such as rice many vegetables such as cabbage fruits so we uh, basically concentrate on the rice pathogen and the cabbage pathogen as a model system to understand the uh, social communication so in our lab we discovered a quorum sensing system in xanthomonas which we called as dsf diffusible signal factor it is a cisinoic fatty acid uh, uh, 11 cis methyl to dodecanoic acid it is produced again very similarly in a density dependent fashion but the take home message is that this production is very important to cause the bacteria to cause disease 
So on the right hand side, you can see the rice leaves which are infected with the bacteria. The first leaf A has been infected with a wild type bacteria. As you can see, the rice leaf has turned brown and it is causing the disease. And the middle, the B part, has been infected with a genetically modified bacteria which is cannot produce the signal. And you can see it is completely unable to cause disease. But when you either put back the signal back, it can restore the disease causing ability. So that quorum sensing in the anthomonas is helping the bacteria to coordinate disease uh, causing. And how we detected that, we developed a lot of these language detectors, which are called as biosensors, in which you can detect the production and the dynamics of the signal very easily. And this is an example life inside the plant. This is the plant xylem vessel. Xylem vessels are the vessels through which water is conducted from the roots to the different part of the plant. And this bacteria, which is depicted in green color, is colonizes in the xylem vessel. And you can see large formation of large biofilms inside the, inside the plant. And we, I am not going much into detail. What uh, we basically dissected, started dissecting out the quorum sensing regulatory circuit, which is very complex. And uh, so, in a nutshell, bacteria utilizes very complex and sophisticated information processing uh, technology by quorum sensing to perform various social tasks. So there are multiple sensors, response regulators which not only sense uh, DSF or the quorum sensing signal, but also senses other environmental signal such as phosphate, iron availability. And all the system actually coordinates and cooperate with each other to give feedback signal to cause a synchronized gene expression so that the bacteria can adjust to the changing rapid change in the environmental condition. This is a very simplified model of quorum sensing in which initially the number of bacteria is less. So the low quorum actually activates the chemotaxis system. So the bacteria migrates in the entry point. And once they enter, they start secreting virulence vector, which helps them to get host nutrients. So they grow more in numbers. And when their number reaches a threshold, when there is a high quorum, it tells the bacteria you form your own society or a biofilm to have a very long persistent infection. And this formation happens in a very orchestral fashion, synthesis of uh, different adhesins, which helps the bacteria to attach among themselves uh, also and also with the host. This I will skip because this aunt wanted to show a movie and uh, I think uh, uh, if the time permits, we will see it in the later. So now talking, as I told you, is very good for uh, causing social behavior and also coordinated action. But it also have a disadvantage. It is basically a double-edged sword. So, so one disadvantage of the double-edged sword is that too much talking can also alert the host defense system. And so these questions which we uh, started asking, whether there is a switch between speaking and non-speaking forms, whether there is an active competition which goes on in the cell. And if you see the behavior of cooperation, so this social cooperation is more like altruism, which is benefit for a large, but this kind of altruistic society also give rise to cheaters. Cheaters means those which are genetically identical, but they don't perform the task. So they take all the benefits from the performers <coughs> and in they do the cheating. But if this happens, then there will be disadvantage of cooperation and selection of cheaters. Obviously, the full thing will become cheaters. So the remedy for this thing nature has selected is what is called as reversible phenotypic heterogeneity. So as you know, in evolution, evolution, 
phenotypic heterogeneity is important to perform bet hedging or uh, performing multiple tasks as well as cheating is a problem so nature has made a switch which is called as reversible switch in which performers and non performer ratio can be shifted by altering the genetic switch and this will give advantage of both talking together as well as performing diversity function i will not go into much detail about the experiments but the thing is that we can uh, tell is that we can very uh, distinctly can uh, isolate the cheaters and non cheaters so uh, by using uh, fluorescent activated cell sorters and other uh, techniques and we can thoroughly study that and what is the advantage of uh, having both cheating and non cheating because they perform both the task as i told you the performers are more capable of forming biofilm and less in migration and non performers are less in forming biofilm and more on migration so this is the wild type which is less migration and the mutant which is quorum sensing deficient it moves more when you mix both of them and you see that only the cheaters contribute more towards the spread spreading the systemic spread of the infection and the performers more contribute towards the biofilm formation and then we gave a model which is called a reversible non genetic heterogeneity in quorum sensing this is the first time we showed uh, that uh, there are populations of cheaters and non cheaters which is controlled by an environmental switch and it controls the population level in such that it maintains performers and non performers in a balanced way to perform social task then the last part of my talk so we have studied so much about the basic biology and uh, evolution but what we can apply in a real uh, problem solving uh, approach like uh, is there will be any, any strategy strategies to interfere cell cell signaling as i told you quorum sensing is very important to cause disease so you can disrupt the quorum sensing by either degrading the signaling molecule or by overproducing the signaling molecule to and this altering or altering the signaling molecule itself to cause cap pathogen confusion so this will be <coughs> done uh, with this we have done in both transgenic and non transgenic approach transgenic means genetically modified and non transgenic approach so these are what we could now do is called as social drugs so these are very advantages these are anti microbial agents not as antibiotic but it has long lasting impact so this is a example of a uh, application so you can we can produce the quorum sensing signaling molecule is large amount in the lab by artificial genetic engineering and you can spray them in the plants so basically you are fooling the bacteria because these plants have been spiked up with the quorum sensing signaling molecule when the real bacteria infects it thinks it gets the message that we are too high in number we should stop that is what it happened so this leaves the leaf at the right hand side has been first sprayed with the dsf and then inoculated with the bacteria you can see it stops and this has been inoculated with the bacteria alone you can see the disease progression so you can get a very significant reduction in the disease severity by using this uh, biological control method we have also used transgenic approach in which we have transferred the whole bacterial quorum sensing system into the plants so now these plants are producing bacterial quorum sensing signaling molecule and when the real infection happens this y axis is the disease index and you can see the wild type plant is showing very severe disease symptoms but all the transgenic plants are very resistant to the disease so at the end of my talk uh, i would like to thank all my lab members the names which are in the yellow they are the current lab members uh, postdoc and phd students they are carrying out different projects in the lab 
and the uh, name which are in green they have uh, my past students postdocs who have left the lab and because of them and also the present workers i have presented in a, uh, my work and all the work is because of their hard work and i want to thank also our funding agencies like cdfd uh, our institute give, gives us core funding like and dbt and national bioscience and iib acrb and csi thanks for your attention thank you very much uh, dr chatterjee for enlightening uh, all the students as well as the faculty members and the scholars who are present in the attendee list right now uh, there are few questions uh, would you like to uh, yeah yeah on? sure 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 so if you can see the chat uh, mm, yeah there are few basics and some advanced level questions so you can okay. decide accordingly yeah so i will start from the top uh, how it is understood that other play, uh, played bacteria not talking because uh, we know they are not talking because we have put the circuit which can detect the signal and it is not uh, on and this uh, bacteria has been genetically knocked off of talking is it okay then i go to next uh, question yeah yeah please uh, yeah i request the attendees if they are satisfied with the answers yeah. then it is okay yeah please so <clears throat> how we distinguish the good bacteria and the bad, bad bacteria so the good and bad, bad bacteria can be distinguished by their production of the virulence factor and uh, the virulence factor are different proteins or toxins which they produce and we can detect them either by genetic uh, modification or by biosensors so is it possible to transfer light producing quality of bacteria to other type of protein yes it is possible like i showed you some pictures we have uh, the biosensors which we use is from a green fluorescent protein it is an uh, from a jellyfish so this uh, protein actually gives a light and that we are using in bacteria similarly bacterial proteins or light can be used also then comes sudden increase volume is very disturbing please fix it so that we can listen. okay okay the molecule that produce light does it has any other beneficial function for back uh, so the molecule that produce light in case of vibrio fishery it gives a help uh, to the fish to get its food because it act as a search light and for bacteria it uh, the fish uh, pro provides the protection and gives a nice niche to grow so it is a symbiosis in that case yeah another person is telling sound recording is possible so uh, professor uh, maroch he will have the sound recording you can ask uh, uh, to share is it more, any more questions are there i think uh, if you scroll down mm -hmm. yeah there are two questions which were in okay. the last kindly explain such a large very uh, error bar especially in some of the samples in the second last slide so the error bars uh, you are uh, seeing because these are standard deviation because standard deviation usually in the disease ca cases suppose you infect 20 30 uh, plants in some plants you get more disease or less but they are all statistically significant i uh, some spore forming i have studied some spore forming uh, stationary phase for the growth some better prefer to die rather than spore form okay so yeah this is also a algorithm many bacteria they sacrifice for example neurospora when it uh, grows from a spore to the when it gets starvation 
it forms a stalk like structure like spores forming structure the vegetative part actually sacrifices itself to provide food for the for the stalk so that the next generation can eat so maximum size of the bacteria can you comment it's so hardly around more than not more than 4 to 5 micrometer in length depending upon the shape i talked about the rod shape bacteria so rod shape bacteria maximum up to go up to 6 micrometer the chemical which gives blue color okay the, it is not the chemical it is a luminescence so basically there is a luciferous uh, 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 enzyme luminol kind of enzyme and there is a luminol substrate made by the that uh, bacteria that gives the fluorescence and in case of the green color which i showed green fluorescence protein it is the endogenous fluorescence the, there is a chromophore which is there in the protein which gives the uh, uh, green color at a specific wavelength yeah, i think you have taken up nearly all possible questions so thank you very much uh, dr shatri ji yeah thank you very much for sparing your valuable time with us and enlightening all the students and the faculty members who have been present in this particular webinar and on behalf of the national academy of sciences india delhi chapter and the host institution that is the indian upadhyaya college i would like to thank you once again and i would like to invite all the attendees to join us for another interesting session uh, which is part of this month long series on january 10th thank you very much dr chatterjee thank you thank, thank you sure okay